For more on this, we are joined live from Maseru Lesotho by our correspondent Ntagwana Ngantani. Good evening, Ntagwana. Now, what are the critical issues that were discussed at this meeting? Well, good evening, Tabile. Essentially, as we've said in that package, the meeting was expected to find common ground. One has to look at what SACU means to Lesotho and what SACU means for South Africa, perhaps what SACU means for the other member states. For Lesotho in particular, SACU is a big revenue earner. At some point, it contributed something like 60% of tax revenues. Uh, 2012 13, it contributed about 45% of tax revenues for Lesotho, so that is quite a huge amount. Now, in terms of the revenue sharing itself, the countries work together to collect customs and excise from imports and exports between one another and from outside. And when they do that, then South Africa becomes the largest or gets the largest share of that pool. But because it is the largest exporter, to the other countries, then it ends up paying to the other countries more than what it makes itself out of this pool. So one understands that from South Africa's point of view, it is an industrialized country that exports a lot. And what it would be looking to do would be for other countries to also export to it, produce enough so that it can also benefit somehow from importing from those countries. But that is not the case. So now Chairperson President Jacob Zuma says all of that must change. We must now look at SACU as an instrument to help the other countries to industrialize. He specifically used that term. He also said that the revenues from the pool should also be used to improve facilitation of trade in the region or in the customs block so that the other countries are more equipped to produce themselves and uh, all the member countries become economically independent as opposed to depending on one another. So these were the talks. He says he's happy. Lesotho says it is happy. Now, Takwana, speaking of economic um, independence for some of the other countries, what else are those countries doing beyond these discussions to ensure that they do become economically independent? Well, one can look at uh, Lesotho particularly. You remember that the biggest uh, exports for Lesotho uh, to South Africa would be water. To other regions of the world, it would be diamonds. But particularly to the United States of America, Lesotho has been exporting textiles. But also it has been warned by both the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund that it should win itself off of this dependency of being one tracked in terms of exporting to one market and perhaps producing one product as it has been over the years. But also uh, the IMF and the World Bank have warned Lesotho against being dependent on SACU itself because of the likelihood of changes within the bloc itself as we are now seeing in terms of perhaps the tariff regime and other countries perhaps saying, well, it is about time we opened up our markets instead of keeping them closed because as it is now, the countries are trading duty-free among one another, but perhaps one will find some other market where they can trade more competitively than they are with the other member states and what, what happens then? So these are just some of the issues that that Lesotho is looking at to diversify its markets. Uh, we have spoken previously to the Minister of Trade who is on a huge mission to go to other countries to find other uh, investors who are now manufacturing things like car seats in Lesotho instead of clothing only and that are destined for markets like the region, like South Africa, like Europe, outside of the United States that Lesotho has depended on so much. But also in terms of agriculture, Lesotho says that it wants to go into agro-processing. At the moment, it is totally dependent on subsistence farming and very little agro-processing happens in the country. As we've seen, uh, Lesotho imports a lot of foodstuffs from South Africa. It also imports inflation as a result. And now with the worsening drought that is affecting South Africa itself, uh, those food prices are even higher. So these are just some of the things that Lesotho in particular is doing. And we expect that the other countries perhaps have their own initiatives to ensure that they are independent. Tabile? Ntakwane, what about manufacturing? I mean, it's a sector that's quite a huge potential job creator, but in a lot of the countries in the group, it's in decline. 
Are they considering um, finding ways to improve the manufacturing sectors of those countries to ensure that they do reach um, the goals that they have set for themselves? Oh, certainly. Uh, as I say, if we can look at Lesotho in particular, uh, it has depended a lot on textiles manufacturing. The result or the, the reason uh, it ended up in that position is because it was taking advantage of the Africa Growth Opportunity Act of the United States of America, and that provides duty-free uh, access to European or to, uh, rather to the United States market for goods manufactured in Lesotho. But it has some conditions. Uh, like now, uh, some countries or uh, fabrics that come from some countries are not eligible for those duty-free entry uh, conditions into the United States of America. So now, as I say, the Minister of Trade in Lesotho is on a huge mission to look for other manufacturing outside of textiles. Uh, for instance, Lesotho is now manufacturing car seats for BMW. It's manufacturing car seats for other major manufacturers. And some of them are going into the the region, South Africa, where some components uh, are manufactured or some uh, assembling is done with uh, the automotive sector. Also, Lesotho is uh, going into manufacturing other uh, products that are made out of plastic, for instance. Uh, we have seen quite uh, big names like BIC being manufactured in some of the new industries here in Lesotho. So that's just one of those things. And if you look at the other countries as well, uh, from what President Jacob Zuma told us today, he says uh, the discussions that he has had with Botswana, the discussions he's had with Namibia, the discussions that he's had with Swaziland, and seem to have made them happy that these countries now want for SACU itself to assist them so that they don't just take the money and contribute it to their budgets uh, for infrastructure development, but that they use the money that they collect as a revenue or rather as a customs block to improve their own economies so that they can industrialize and be better at managing their own economies. Now, Ntakwane, President Zuma is accompanied by, among others, Trade and Industry Minister Rob Davies and Finance Minister Pravin Gordon. Despite political issues, what else is on the agenda? Well, uh, what we saw happening today, I can tell you that, first of all, he paid a courtesy call on His Majesty King Lysia III. He then went into a one-on-one -on -one meeting with Prime Minister Pagadi Tamo Sisidi. And during that time, we saw the ministers of international relations, the minister of trade, as well as the minister of finance meeting their counterparts. And then they met with their principals following those meetings. But from what we can understand, it is that for, from an international relations perspective, you know that Lesotho and South Africa have issues where South Africa has been assisting Lesotho with its political uh, instability. We know that in terms of trade, uh, it is particularly things like the SACU meeting that happened today. But also from a finance perspective, Lesotho has been getting budget support, for instance, from the European Union. But it has said that it is looking within to find support in terms of the joint bilateral commission for cooperation between the two countries that is assisting Lesotho to again become more independent, uh, to graduate from being a least developed country. This is one undertaking that South Africa made. So we expect that these are some of uh, the conversations that are happening between the two countries beyond the SACU talks that were happening here in Lesotho today. Tabil. Ntakwane, now you've been on the ground. In your discussions with business people in Lesotho and, and even at the meeting that you were at today, what's the reaction like? Are people excited about this initiative? Well, uh, I must tell you that people were very apprehensive, in fact, because as I say, SACU contributes quite a large share of the budget here in Lesotho, up to 60% at some point. 2012-13, it was about 44.9% of the tax revenue here in Lesotho. And so apprehension might be you know, expected from some people. Some were saying, if South Africa decides to pull the plug and basically say, well, 
we don't want to be part of this customs union because we don't seem to be benefiting from it as much as the other member states. What are we going to do? Is Lesotho ready to forfeit those revenues from SACU? So these are just some of the conversations that especially the non-governmental organizations have been having, uh, that some of the business sector, uh, the private sector have been having to say Lesotho should find a way for the private sector for non-governmental organizations to play a huge role in transforming the economy and ensuring that more people participate in the, in the economy as opposed to now where it depends almost entirely on the government. Now where you have uh, the turmoil in the country that affected uh, the rollout of government projects, you found that it affected the construction sector, for instance, because government is the biggest uh, supplier in terms of giving out work in the infrastructure sector. So these are just some of the conversations that are happening. But for now, we are just coming out with the news of the agreement or the understanding that has been reached between Lesotho and South Africa. And we expect that in the next few days, we will hear whether the apprehension continues or whether the business sector now accepts uh, the discussions that have happened and how South Africa and the rest of SACU sees SACU uh, contributing to the economic development of the region and Lesotho. Tabile. Takwana, just finally, something I want us to look at is entrepreneurship. For example, in South Africa, you've got the Small Business Ministry really looking at initiatives to support small business structures. Is the same happening in Lesotho? Is entrepreneurship really being used as a way um, to grow the economy there and some of the other countries involved in SACU? One can look at it in two different ways. The first way is the approach of the government to the issue. In the past, we had a Ministry of Trade and Industry and Cooperatives, but we see this new government now separating the two and having a separate Ministry of Small Business and a separate Ministry of Trade and Industry. So that's perhaps one way that we can say they see small business as a good contributor to economic growth. But the biggest challenge still remains funding small businesses here in, here in Lesotho, you find that banks are still quite averse to lending small businesses. A lot of small businesses have to fund themselves. You remember that Lesotho only recently just got a stock exchange and this is one way of financing business startups and it has not existed in Lesotho in the past. When we spoke to the governor of the central bank when it was launched, she said yes, it is one way that the country is trying to give perhaps the banks a run for their money to say if you're not willing to lend to the people, we need to open up other avenues so that privately they can raise funding but that it can be regularized and regulated by the central bank. We have not seen any listings there yet. We expect that perhaps the first listings will start with the government bonds that exist at the moment. But uh, for now, we have not seen any private enterprises going there. But there is a lot of interest with small businesses going to the central bank and saying, how do we qualify? How do we uh, manage to raise funding and capital through the stock exchange. So these are just some of the small steps that we see. And uh, as I say, agriculture, another major area where small businesses in many countries play a huge role, is quite dominant in Lesotho. But there is a lot of awareness going on at the moment, particularly with the current drought, where the country is now saying agriculture must be looked at as a way to reinvigorate the economy here in Lesotho. Tabil. Ntagwana, we'll have to leave it there. Thank you very much for that update. That was our correspondent Ntagwana Ngadani speaking to us from Lesotho.